Uh, all right, everybody, 2024. It's a new year. We got a lot going on. Got the brand new Phoenix, my brand new bass boat. This is my 10th Phoenix bass boat. And this is the brand new XE, the 21 footer XE. We got some new stuff going on. We got a different engine hanging off the back. We went Yamaha. I have an old Yamaha boat, a tin boat at my house I just love. It's a 99 and that thing fires up right away every single day. Just making some changes more so for me. For where I'm at in my career, I wanna win some tournaments. I wanna fish for me, I wanna have a lot of fun. I still got great sponsors that have been by my side for a super long time, but we did make some changes. In 2024, we're kicking them off. The biggest one, electronics. If you followed me at all, you know that I've been a diehard Lowrance angler for a long time, and I am, I truly am. They're still on the boat, three as a matter of fact. But at the same time, I have been with Lowrance for so long that I don't know what else is out there. I've been so faithful, so loyal to them that I don't really know. I want to have the best answers. What's the best stuff out there today? And if that means running everything, different electronics companies looking for what's best you, I'm gonna be able to bring that kind of content and that's what we're looking forward to. So come on, let's get aboard my 24, my Phoenix XE, and I'm gonna walk you through my setup of what I'm looking for this year out on the water. Check it out. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about that is unique to me this year is basically my entire life I've ran Lowrance. I did have a hummingbird early when I first was getting into bass fishing uh, when side imaging came out and that would have been I don't know, mid, late 2008, nine, 10, somewhere in there. Anyway, that's all I really know. I don't know menus, I don't know anything. I've done a ton of Lowrance on the water trains, but I've never been able to help anybody else. So redundancy is key for me this year. The biggest thing is I am running all major brands. I'm running Lowrance, I'm running Garmin, and I'm running Humminbird. I'm utilizing Minn Kota trolling motors, power poles, power pole charger, and some stuff from Sonar Pros to help and of course my X2 batteries. I got a whole new setup there. We're running lithium for some stuff. Let's just get into it. Right off the bat, I have ran Lowrance my entire life. My waypoint system, mapping, I can utilize Navionics. I can utilize CMAP, all on these. I do believe that Lowrance has by far the best mapping, charting, not necessarily mapping. It's great to have everybody's mapping. They have in areas they are really good, but as far as actually moving around, utilizing GPS, utilizing your chart, utilizing waypoints, waypoint management, memory, Lowrance crushes. I think that they're the best in that department. I wouldn't even think about right now where I'm at utilizing any of the other ones for that because I do believe they're the best. Huge memories. At one time, quad core processor. I'm not even sure what these new pros are at now. And then they've come a long way. Their new structure scan too. Uh, structure scan side imaging, I think is on par with any of the other big brands, in particularly uh, Hummingbird Mega Imaging. Not enough, I don't think they have enough there. Mega Imaging does, from my point of view and what I've done, to want to uh, sacrifice a slower processor or just mapping. Mapping's huge. I am gonna utilize mapping on my Hummingbird up front. Always been a big advocate of that, but there's also ways that I can use my apps to also use mapping here, whether it's on my iPhone, whether it's on a, a Google pad, whatever it may be. So there's now, there's it's 2024, there's ways around that. So I do for side imaging for, I think they're all so close that I wasn't gonna necessarily just change everything I know, refigure out all my waypoints and do all that strictly for uh, side imaging, down scan, uh, Lowrance I think is the way to go. So at my face, two Lowrance HDS Pro 12s running either CMAP or Navionics in here. I have a Skosh mount over here on the far right side that I can put my phone, I can put my pad on there and I can run Lake Master mapping if that's what I wanna do or even you know Google or satellite imagery, I kinda have it all right here. So that's where I'm doing my recon. Now let's take it to the front of the boat and that's where we're catching them. Come check this out. All right, next up, up is the business side of the boat. Now, on the Phoenix XE, we're gonna get into some more of that, some more of the new features with it. One of which is that they've really squared this boat off on the front. I always ran the PHX. That, I mean, I've, I've ran different boats, but from Phoenix, they're all dynamite, but for what I do, real big water, guiding uh, the PHX is butter on top of the big waves. So, the bottom of this boat, the XE, still got the PHX hull. The top, 
switched it out for today's electronics. As you can see, if you wanna be competitive in tournament fishing like I do, consistently put clients on 20 plus pound bags of bass like I need to and get good content for your all, I gotta be running a lot of electronics. That's 2024 for you in a nutshell. And this year we're running the big three. We got Humminbird, we got Lawrence, of course, and we got Garmin. We're running them in Coda Trolling Motor. This is the brand new Altrex Quest. I have that in both a 45 inch shaft and a 52 inch shaft. Uh, right now down in Florida, we're using this 45 inch shaft to move around in the buggy whips and all that. And then when we get out on the lax and out of the big water, I'll switch over to my long shaft, my 52, uh, utilizing 360. That is the first time I've been able to utilize it with hummingbirds version of 360, which is the original version of 360. Uh, Lawrence did kind of make shift up some different ways that you could utilize 360. Uh, I never felt it was overly efficient, hence why I didn't have it on my boats, hence why you never saw too many videos or me, anything of me plugging it. I just wasn't using it my day to day. I thought it was a nice feature, a relatively cheap feature that people who maybe could use it more, but I think 360 for that kind of revolving imagery is definitely the way to go. Super excited to use this for grass fishing, you know, just getting to know my surroundings better, but things are gonna change throughout the year. So right now I'm running a Lowrance HDS Pro 12. This is tied into my mapping, my waypoints. Basically, that's what I'm utilizing here. I'm running a Hummer bird apex 13 this i've got hooked up to 360 i can also utilize this for some lake master mapping and then i'm running a garmin and this is the 12 inch ultra 2 garmin i'm running the lvs 34 system for live scope so i've made the switch over i do think one that live scope is the original they're the og just like minko the 360 all that i tend to always favor the ogs if i have my choice i think that they're one step ahead of everything and so i'm excited to make that change I think you can see your bait a little bit better and all that, but uh, it wasn't like active target isn't comparable. And that's where we're really gonna break this down. So let's talk about what's coming. I have a boat logic, you know, I'm running, I'm waiting on a couple different, this is all new to me, my setup. So I had to special order a lot of stuff. I'm waiting on a couple gimbal mounts to, make all this match up. I have a Bolt Logix 3 graph deck mount system that's sitting at my house. I'm gonna be switching over a lot of stuff this year, mainly for the content, mainly for the teaching, and most certainly for the learning aspect. For me, I'm going back to school. Bass fishing is changing, fishing is changing fast. I have a bassy mind. I love the technology. I've always been ahead of the curve when it comes to the electronics. So I, that is my biggest goal is to get into there, break it down. So I am running full redundancy on everything. I have an extra Apex I carry. I have an extra Garmin. I have an extra LBS 34. I have an extra Lowrance graph. And as soon as we get done with Okeechobee, I'm going up to my friends up at Wetumpka Marine in Northern Alabama. And we're gonna be running two active targets off the back of the boat that I can idle around and utilize coming off of my Atlas Jack plate. So this is my setup, the Minn Kota. I think that is one of the biggest things of the trolling motor game right now. I think Minn Kota, I think Powerpole are both are winning right now in the trolling motor department. They have a little bit better control. Minn Kota still utilizes the cable on this new Quest. I found that to be nice. One thing that I didn't love about the Ghost when I was trying to use forward sonar was the fact that when I'm using an electric pedal, it needs to ignite, it needs to ignite something. So you push the pedal and I'm trying to stay, you know, I'm looking like this, looking like this. Oh, I see a fish, I wanna come right back on it and it goes and then and it goes back through. It was efficient for running down the bank fishing, uh, but it lacked in grass, definitely. And I didn't like the fact that it was a little quick. And then it didn't have a true header. You know, I needed Boat Logics to make me a special pointer. There are some things that I, I will plug in. If you look to here, my buddies have introduced me to on the Ghost, a way that you can actually make the arrow accurate. It is an aftermarket part. I'm sure Lorenz will fix that aspect one day down the road. You gotta give them credit there. They came out with that trolling motor and then boom, forward sonar kind of blew up. So as I'm learning, I like to be able to have the head moving in my peripheral vision because when I was getting my hind end kicked at Lake Champlain, those dudes were just dropping dimes everywhere without looking up and that's just how I gotta get. 
if I want to beat the best and get back to the top stages of professional bass fishing, well then I, I gotta I gotta do it. You wanna be a dreamer, you better be a doer. I heard that before and I absolutely loved it. So we got a lot of changes that are gonna be made here all throughout the year. At some point, the apex might come off and maybe I find that running two LBS 34s up here is gonna be the deal. A lot of things to change. I have a third mount back there also from Boat Logics that I'll be running for a third draft, whether that ends up being another hummingbird for better mapping. Maybe I end up using that Lake Master as much as people tell me I'm going to. Perhaps I want to put a, a LVS 34 off my trauma. I don't know. Guiding. I want to sit back there and I want to watch what they're doing. I'm going to have the full setup. I'm going to bring it all to you this year. And I'm just like I'm doing right now. I'm going to give you my honest opinion from a guy that's been with the company for a long time. I got nothing but good things to say. The technology that's coming is insane, but it's enough to make me know that to bring good content, I need to know a true good opinion, not always just be a bot and pony. So with that said, let's dig into the Phoenix. All right, one thing I wanted to point out about the Phoenix XC, I will have a full boat walkthrough coming once everything comes in uh, from Minnesota. When we get down here to Florida, we got packages coming and going everywhere, a few different odds and ends. But one thing I want to show you is as these boats are evolving, uh, this is where Phoenix kind of stepped up with this XE. They really squared this off. So as we start adding bigger and more drafts to the front of the boat, I mean, some guys on the tours are running the 22 inch stuff. They gave you back a spot to step when you're actually getting into your boat, which is getting to be quite difficult. But now it's squared off. You can get your tarp back on here. In here, this is actually the factory. Now you can get this ordered, this mount system. Uh, again, when they did this from Phoenix, like I said, later in the season here, once we get back home after Okeechobee, once the electronics get real serious, get my HydroWave on here, and I'm gonna put that three stack mount from uh, Boat Logics on here. But uh, you can see the trolling motor, everything's kind of set up, Okeechobee. You know, we're not gonna hit Santee Cooper, we're not gonna need a whole lot. I will like to utilize this 360 for the grass and, and, and cypress tree knees underneath. And you know, one other thing about the Minn Kota is if you are out and you're fishing the opens, you will wanna look at a, a power pole, a Minn Kota, or even a Garmin trolling motor because Lowrance does not go to the opens for tournament support. So keep that in mind when you're making a purchase with the opens, you know, you don't wanna get there and get stuck with the trolling motor. Uh, need repair or you break. I'm very good at breaking things that could have worked perfectly. It just, like I said, they've been great trolling motors. But one thing to consider too, uh, when you're looking to get a trolling motor, if you're looking to step up or fish bigger national level tournaments. All right, the back of the boat. Definitely a new change here. I got a show, a Yamaha show. You know, back in the day, I was with Evan my whole life. And then one day they closed shop and I ran Merck and Yamaha was just an engine that I've always really wanted. All my buddies that have had them, they're super duper reliable engines and nobody ever leaves Yamaha. Like nobody, nobody. It, it's rare to see somebody get a Yamaha and then all of a sudden switch to the other brand. So I had an opportunity with Warner Dock and in a Phoenix to be one of the few that will be running the Phoenix XE with a shell on the back. So that's why that's why we did it. L really looking forward to it. Want to keep them on. And like I said, I might, my tin boat at home, it's a 98 or 99 and the thing just fires up every single time I start it. So that's the back end. We got eight foot blades, power pull blades, an Atlas jack plate from TH Marine. Every one of my boats have always had these on the back, they have never failed me in any way, shape or form. So I see no reason to ever need to change that. As far as the back of the boat back here goes, we got a lot of power. And this is something we should definitely jump into is the power element of this boat. When you're running all of these graphs, all these electronics, it's important now to have clean power. I am running a Sonar Pros. Trent made me a wire harness for the boat. We're running strong power to everything. You can see right here, I'm running lithium, 125 amp hour, three lithium X2 batteries. Those are running my trolling motor. So I got 20, I got 36 volts of power. If by chance I haven't knocked on wood somewhere, I have not had an issue running any any X2 batteries ever in my life. But if I was and I lost a battery, you know, the trolling motor, what's really nice is a couple of those trolling motors, the Ghost in particular, this new Alltrex, the Quest, and I do, I'm not sure about the other brands. You can run down to 24 volts. You'd have to switch over your battery real quick, get rid of the dead battery and switch it over. It's just a switch to a 24 and you're back up and running. So redundancy for what I do is always super important. That's why we're running those. Lithium power. So I'm running the X2 on this side. We got the big X2 to AGM. 
My last few bolts, I ran two AGMs in parallel all the time, and that was always been plenty of power. This year, I split it off. I've always been so impressed with one AGM. I've never needed more than one AGM. I'm running one AGM to run my big engine and all my accessories, my power poles, my jack plate, my live well pumps, all of that. And then I'm running another 125 X2 battery, lithium 125 amp hour, strictly for my electronics okay so that's something that trent my buddy my buddy steve catlin who rigs all of my boats for me both of them like the idea of that if i have any issue with any electronics then i know exactly where my battery or what my problem is trent also hooked all this stuff up so i'm running a power pull charge to charge this entire system but with one more battery in the sequence i had to run an extra setup that i got from sonar pros for this boat what i really like is it works on a switch right here. So it still steals generator power from my Yamaha uh, via the power pole charge and this system, which is just one extra one, and it keeps this battery charged. So I'm still charging one plug-in, it's breaking off, it's running these four batteries, and then the standalone charger is, is charging, it's a lithium charger, so it's charging this. What I like is I just turn this thing on to lithium when I'm out on the water, and all my electronics are running off that one lithium. Let's just say I do start to lose power. Again, everything's about redundancy and being efficient. No, nobody wants to sacrifice a day on the water, whether it's me fishing almost every day or whether it's somebody at home that gets a couple days. Nobody wants to be without power. Here, I can just switch this over and run to my AGM and then turn my graphs back on and boom, now I'm running again off my AGM battery. So everything's got redundancy, uh, everything's got on off switches and everything powers more by me running around using my engine while I'm idling and all that. Plenty of space, I can fit way more stuff in here. Again, just part of the new designs, extra prop space. They really thought about almost every single feature that you possibly could. And I say almost because I know that they're always innovating and coming up with new. All right, that's my electronic spiel. That's where we're at this year. Running everything, super duper excited about that. Gonna learn a lot. We're bringing the content, that's it. Good fishing content, good electronics content. How do we tie them both in? Map study, everything. Subscribe to Josh Douglas Fishing. Please share this channel and tune in all year. We will have a full walk through on the new Phoenix XE, the 21 XE. Stay tuned for that too. We're going fishing, tight lines.